second moment of area when we have combined shapes it's a bit more to it we've done simple shapes in um second moment of area and we had um simple equations for those back on the web page so in uh, area moments when we did simple shapes like rectangles and circles and triangles, we had a simple formula for a rectangle. It's the centroidal second moment of area is BH cubed over 12, where H is the vertical if the force is vertical, <coughs> and B is perpendicular to the force. All right, so um, <coughs> if we switch the beam around, then the B and the H swap around, so the shorter one gets the cubed, which makes it weak. So it does explain why uh, beams are put length, their, their long dimension is put vertical to make the beam stronger. Circles are symmetrical both directions, so that's why it doesn't matter which way you put that, obviously. And we also have a formula for a triangle. What happens, though, when you have a combined shape like this? What you have to do then is use what's called the parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem goes like this. The contribution of second moment of area is equal to the centroidal second moment of area as calculated for a standard shape like one of these mostly rectangles and then we also have to add the area times the distance to the centroid squared so for example i've broken this l shape into two rectangles number one and number two now the second moment of area of number two is actually equal to the ic of number two b h cubed on 12 plus its area times d2 squared now area and distance squared is millimeters to the fourth that's why we can add them so this is shown in this table here so number one the ic is this number here which is uh 952 million and then the ad squared by the time we add ad squared now we've got um 2288 million so it's gone up a fair bit and uh, likewise with number two, um, it started off at, oh, and no, I've got number one and two in the wrong way, sorry. That was number one. So number one went up from 1952 to 2288, but the small one, which is 90 million, has now gone up to 1849. So it's drastically bigger because it's being bent about a neutral axis that's offset. So that's what they mean by parallel axis. We've moved the axis of the neutral plane down to somewhere else, and that's forcing number two to be bent around this green neutral plane. So the first st step is to find where is the centroid of the entire shape, which is done here uh, using the centroid formula, which is the sum of ay's divided by the sum of a's. And then uh, once we've found that centroid, then we can work out those distances and then we can use parallel axis theorem. And then we can finally add them together. So our total total i's, which are these ones, can then be added. You're not allowed to add these. We can't add those two ic's because they have different centroids. The neutral plane doesn't go through their centroid. You can only add second moments of error if they have the same centroid. All right, so let's go back to this problem here. Um, <clears throat> it's already been split up for us, number one, number two. And so our first job is to find where is a centroid for this thing. And so um, IC plus AD squared. Uh, it doesn't start until first of all finding that centroid. Right now I'm going to do this in Excel because um, otherwise things just get a little bit too messy. <clears throat> so I'm going to split it up into two elements. So I've got element one and two. And then along here, I'm just going to start um, working out my things like area, of course. So number one will be B1, which is equal to 12 times H1, which is 3. And B2, which is 4 times H2, which is 4. The area. Now, in my Y distance. So we're doing vertical here, so we're trying to find YC, so we only need to deal with one thing at a time so the vertical distance to the centroid this is now we're assuming that we're building all of this with some neutral plane 
the end of bonus work on, with this one here. <coughs> so I'm going to draw on it. So I'm going to make my axes down here. Oop, that's not what I wanted. So there's my axis starting right through there. And the other one can be that one. So my distance Y will be the distance from there's the centroid right here. So that's Y1 to there. And then the second centroid will be here, and that will be my y2 up to there. That's y2, and this one's y1. So y1 is half of h1, so that's uh, equal to 3 divided by 2. And y2 will be equal to h1, which is 3. Plus um, H2, 12.3 divided by 2, 9.15 millimetres up to the middle of block 2. All right, area Y. Now I'm going to multiply my AYs together. So A times Y and then sum them. All my AYs is equal to that, and I can also get a total for area as well. Let's just put total back here. Don't need that bad, that's silly. So that's my total A, that's my total AY. So the centroid, so um, the Y, component of the centroid is equal to the AYs divided by the A's, 5.9. So at a distance of 5.9 centimetres, we have the centre of that object. Good. Now we can put our neutral plane at 5.9 and then work out what our distance is. So we can work out our Ds now. So the distance from the centroid, the new centroid, which will be, let me just draw that in another colour now. I like to change colours when I get to the second step, which is when I'm working with the centroid. And that's 12, so 5 would be out here somewhere. So I'm going to say the centroid goes through. Yeah, that's probably good enough. About, oh, about there somewhere. So this is my x, x plane. And the height there is 5.9 from our calculation. So it's almost 6. Probably should go a bit higher. <clears throat> All right, so now my d1 and my, sorry, that was d2 and d1. This is d1, this is d2 can be calculated off here. So we can work that out pretty easily. So D1 is that 5.9 minus the height of Y1, which is 1.5 equals 9, subtract the 1.5 at that height. And this other one is the 5.9 Uh, it's their it's their 9.5 minus 5.9. Right, and so now we have AD squared, so it's area times distance to the power of two. Ah, see, what have I done? Hit the equal sign. Yeah. Equals area times distance to the power of 2. So that formula is take B12, which is this one, that's uh, sorry, B12, which is area, times distance E12 
squared a times d squared because here is a right so there's my ad squared terms <clears throat> now i also need to calculate what ic is for each of these regions job so it's just bh cubed over 12 so the first one is um b1 which is 12 times h1 which is 3 to the power of 3 divided by 12. and this second one is um b2 which is 4 times 12.3 to the power of 3 divided by 12. Much, much bigger second moment of variable than the second one you notice because it's tall and it's the cubed is in height. All right, now we can find out what our terms are about the new neutral plane xx. So this is going to be ic plus ad squared. And that happens both times. All right, so that's the real contribution for each of those areas. Number one, doesn't change a real lot, but number two, yeah, it changes quite a bit. So we've got the AD squared. Oh, sorry, number one changes a lot. Number two changes, no, number one changes the most. All right, we can get our total now, which is just the sum of those two. Okay, remember to write equal sign one day. Equal sum that. 1863. So my second moment of area for the entire shape is 1863. That's my um, final answer. So let's just check to see if we got our final answer right. I'm going to draw this in AutoCAD. Start again. <clears throat> right, I'm going to take it right from scratch. I'm going to get this up from a zero, zero. And go along B1, which is 12. Okay, that's really small. Scroll in a bit. There we go. And H1 is 3. And it's going to go back somewhere. Now it's going to hover over the other one, I get it to pick up. And then the other section starts from here. It goes up H2, which is 12.3. And B2, which is 4. Let's fill up those two together. Just going to get rid of that line there. And then fill up those just to keep it clean. All right, there's my shape. All right, now <clears throat> I am going to move this shape to the centroid. Now I can find the centroid using um, AutoCAD's mass property. So in order to do that, I'll go to the draw command, use region, turn that into region, and hit enter. So it's now region. Then type mass properties. Mass prop. Go and pick the region and hit enter. And there's my mass properties. And it's telling me the central is at 3.65.91. So uh, we'll just say this. Somewhere useful. And then go and pick it up. Alright, so here it is in Notepad. That was the uh, output from the math properties that was exported to file. A little bit messy, but close enough. Slightly. Now we want those centroid values because that's where we need to move our object back to because we can't trust our moments of inertia, this stuff, because we don't have 
this thing bending in the right spot. We've been trying to bend it around the bottom corner here, which is not correct. We need to move this thing. So move it back by um, 3.6, at angle 180, and then move it down in the y direction by 5.9, 176. Angle 270, enter. All right, so now that's the centroid, that point there. Now I've got to do mass properties for that region. Hit enter. And let's say that, yes. And pick it up. And there it is in Notepad. So we have moments of inertia, 1863, also the Y direction. But um, which was the one we're after here? Double checking that our centroid is at zero zero, which it is. That's what we want. And uh, now some of these we don't really care about. I'm going to look at this in a sec. Um, but this is the one we're after. So the IXX moments of inertia. Don't forget is another name for second moment of area. It's just exactly the same thing. I don't. Pref I prefer not to use that name because it's very similar to the mass moment of inertia. Um, so I prefer the second moment of area for the name, but they're both correct. So 1863, what do we have in our calculation here? 1863.9. So 1863.8976, uh, that's the one. So we did get it right. We should be ready to stick that in now. We can get some more decimal places if you want. So I'm pretty confident that we have the right answer there. 18. So what do we have to? Oh, find the y coordinate of the centroid. This is asking. So what's the vertical position of the centroid? Now we did find that already in our table here. So that was this one here. The y position of the centroid is 5.918. Um, seven six, and that's in millimeters. Now find the x coordinate of the centroid. Now that's something we didn't do, so we're trying to find this time all of this, but in the x direction. Giving myself a bit more space here. Shift these over. I need two more columns in here. Insert and insert. Thank you. So I'm going to do x and a x. All right, so our x position of the central is this is going to be fairly easy because they've both got the bottom face on the same end. The so number one is half of b1, so this is equal to 12 on 2, and x2 is half of b2 equals 4 on 2. All right, then we can just simply do those areas area times the x direction. And we can get our totals. And so our xc will, e will equal ax divided by sum of a's. There's my value for the x coordinate of the centroid, um, which was 3.69. In AutoCAD, we got, um, would have been the old one, wouldn't it? Yeah. There, B2, 
before we moved to centroid, it was at 3.69. And that's millimeters. That was it. Just having fun a centroid. Yeah, that was a bit of a that was a bit of a dud. Give us the rest of it. All right, so this time we're going all the way through to find the second moment of the area. I think I did all that work. Oh, well, let's do it again. Might as well keep that in mind. Region one and two. Notice we keep the regions pretty simple when we're doing a quiz, otherwise this would take forever. All right, so the area for number one is B1, which is 10 times H1, which is three. An area for number two is B2, three times H2, which is 16. And we add those together, some of the areas. Now we don't need the X part, we're smiling the question, so let's just delete those. All right, the Y distance. So the Y is the vertical distance to the centroid of that object, so half of H1. So Y1 equals H1, three, divided by two. And Y2 equals H2, 16. Now we calculate A times Y equals area times distance. Copy that down. Now we can add them. I'm just going to copy my sum command, get rid of that one because we can't add our Ys together. And now we can get our YC is equal to the AY, sum of AYs, divided by sum of As, 5.5. So our centroid is at 5.5 millimeters from the bottom. Let's see how we go in AutoCAD. Let's make a new one. We'll start off again. I'm going to draw everything from oops, zero, tap zero, from the bottom corner being my start at B1, which is 10. And H1 H1 is three. My first rectangle. B2 is three. H2 is sixteen. Fill those together. And then I'll just get rid of that and fill those. Done. That's my shape. Doesn't look much like the picture, does it? Because they're random numbers. All right. Turn that into a region. So we go to the, to the draw command, hit the region button. Select everything, hit enter. Okay, now it's a region. Then go mass properties. Click the region, hit enter. Done. And write analysis to file. Yes, it will, and we'll save it. Very useful. Okay, I'm just opening that with uh, Notepad. And there it is. That's the mass properties for that section, which are really area properties, but anyway. And we've got a centroid there at X is 9 and Y is 5.5. 5.5, that looks familiar. Didn't we have something like that? There it is, 5.5, same number. So yes, the Y value is 5.5. Now I'm going to grab this and move it back so that the centroid is sitting 
right where um, it's, it's so that it sits right on its centroid at the origin. So we need to move it x direction back by 9 and the y direction down by 5.5. So let's move it back by exactly 9 millimetres and then we move it down by exactly 5.5. <clears throat> I'm cheating a bit, I'm using using the snap. So I don't have to type, you know, angles and 270 degrees and all that jazz. Right, there he is with the centroid. That's the actual centroid for this part. It's just sitting right there. And now if I do mass properties, I should have my centroid at zero, zero. And there it is, centroid at zero, zero. So let's um, write this in. Yes, thank you. Let's save that somewhere. Then go and open it. Open with Notepad. And there we have our mass properties for that thing. Centroid, just double checking, make sure the centroid is at zero, zero, which it is. And then we've got moments of inertia, the vertical, which is the xx, and the sideways one, pushing from this side, which is 1066. Now I'm going to come back to this in a sec, because there's some more interesting stuff down here. All right, back to the question, though. What was the question asking us? It was saying, tell me the... I think, was that centroid? Oh, okay, so find the YC, we had 5.5. .5. Both times, that's millimetres. And here we have the second moment of IXX, so that's, which one is that? So that's the moment of inertia in the X direction. Different name, same thing, so we've got 1826.5. 1826.5, I think, let's have a look. We're not even there yet. All right, so let's see if we can finish this one off. So our distance is our 5.5. Basically, it's just the distance between those two. And it's always going to be a positive number because you're going to square it anyway. So it's pretty easy. You can just grab that thing. Y, grab that thing. It's a bigger one. Subtract that one. All right. So AD squared is area times distance to the power of 2, even if you had a negative number, wouldn't matter because you're squaring it. 80 squared. And our IC is equal to B H cubed on 12, so we've got, for number 1, just make sure we've got the right region here, I'm going to get that mixed up. So number 1 is B1, 10, times H1, which is 3, to the power of 3 on 12. And number 2 is B2, which is 3, times 16 to the power of 3 on 12. All right, now we can add them together. So it equals IC plus AD squared. There's my two second moments of area for those different shapes. So let's shrink this up a bit. Now we can add them equals the sum of all that stuff. 1827, if I'm going to use a few more decimal places, adding 26.5, that looks like what we had before. Right, so that looks like it's the right number. And the units there will be millimetres to the fourth. <coughs> all right, now, Let's go back to that uh, notepad drawing seven. Where is he? There, that one. Right, now what is this saying, this, the rest of this here? I'm going to use the uh, AutoCAD drawing because it's more accurate. All right, so moment of inertia X says 
1826.5 is the stiffness when you're pushing down and it's bending naturally about the neutral plane, which is right where the origin is now. All right, you're pushing from the top. If you're pushing from the side, it's not quite as stiff because this leg is not as long as that leg. That's why it's only 1,000 rather than 1,800, so it's a bit weaker this way because unequal angle. All right, don't worry about that one. Don't worry about those two. But what about this one here? What's this saying? Principal moments in the xy direction is about the centroid. So there is a centroidal um, maximum when you bend it a different way, and it's bending at 0.848 minus 0. So what's this thing mean? What it means is you go along 0. 0.8 and you go down minus 5. 5.3 and that would be the direction of the um, application so so this is the strongest that you get so then that would mean the neutral plane is at eight I might try and draw that one we got 84 let's see if we can draw that so start at the origin and we're going to go along Um, I'll take maybe 84.8, a bit huge, and I'll go down 53, okay, and then I kind of come back this way. So what that was all about was just give me the slope of um, the neutral plane. So if you make that the neutral plane, then it's the strongest you can get. That's the strongest this bend can be. Now, how is that the neutral plane? Well, if you push with a force perpendicular to this, so it's going like this way, perpendicular to that, so if that's your force pushing down this direction on here, then this is going to be really stiff. And what normally happens is the weakest way is the opposite. So you go 90 degrees to that, this is probably going to be the weakest way, which it is. So if you push this way or push from this side, you can be pushing top or bottom, doesn't matter. Then you, it'll be the weakest that it is. So a piece of angle is weakest when it's um, like a hat shape and it's strongest when it's sitting upright. So there you go. So they're principal moments. So that's the highest second moment of error you can get. Depend, it tells you what direction do you need to go to get an even higher second moment of error than the centroidal second moments of area here, which is only 1826. But you can get more than that. You can get 2314 if you push it a little bit at an angle like this one is. So there you go, principal second moments of area. Not even in the quiz, but nice to know about that. All right, so that is the, uh, the last of the combined shapes. There is another one here which looks like a combined shape, but we can cheat on this one quite easily. The way we do this one, is we um, let's just go down to that one here. Is we uh, cheat by taking a section, just go black, a little bit bigger. I'm going to take the outside and then I'm going to subtract two holes. One and two. What you'll notice though is they all have exactly the same neutral plane because they're all going directly through the same point, which is that. If they have the same neutral plane, then you don't have to use the parallel axis theorem because it's not moving anywhere. So we just have to work out the I for that and subtract the I for that and that, or two of those because they're both the same. And that's it. So that's going to be pretty, pretty easy. None of this parallel axis theorem needed. So let's have a look. So the um, the first one, number one, is B H cubed on 12. So B is B1, 13, times H1, 24, to the power of 3, divided by 12. So this, this one. And the holes are B. And that's that distance here. So that's equal to B1, 13, minus B2, 
5.5. We get that much, then we're gonna have to halve that divided by 2. 3.75 on each of those ends. That's my B. And then H is H2, which is 16. So B, I'll just put bracket. And that's B times 16 to the power of 3 divided by 12. That so says one of those minus two of them. Total is equal to the big square, or the big rectangle, minus two lots of holes, which are worth 1280 each. And give me 12 for 16. Before I do it, let's just double check we get the right answers here. Just going to draw this up. Now it is symmetrical, so I should be able to draw it symmetrically. So I'll make that the origin right there. I know I know where the centroid is, so I can start drawing right from that centroid. Then we go down by H1, which is 24, so we go down by 12. B1, which is 13, so that's 6.5. B2, which is 5.5, so that's uh, 2.75. And going down there, H2 is 16, so that's 8. Done. Easy. Right, we'll just um, make life easy, just mirror this thing. Raise, no thanks. Don't need those lines anymore. Mirror that again. Um, no. Do those two. That's him. Now, the region. Draw region. Everything. Enter. Thanks. Now, mass properties. that region and enter. There we have it, moments of inertia in the y direction is 16, oh sorry, in the x direction should be uh, 12, 4, 16, 12, 4, 16, 12, 4, 16, there's the number, same thing. Good, it worked. So we should be confident that 12, 4, 16 in millimeters the fourth should work. Good. Well, that's it for the uh, combined shapes in the second moment of area.